Hey guys, Latios here. I'm back with another video and this one is a little bit different than what I normally do on this channel. Uh, with Beyblade X starting a few months ago and so many people getting into the series and the hobby and the sport, I thought it would be the perfect time to basically make a guide for these newcomers, these new beginners and just any fan in general as well. Especially with the holiday season coming up too, I thought that would be the perfect time to release this video. Um, this is originally based on a Reddit post that I wrote out, but that had some outdated information. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so this is very recently updated, as in I'm recording this on November 25th, and the last update I made to this was uh, literally yesterday, the 24th. Um, so at the current moment, this is the most updated. This is a beginner's guide to Beyblade X and specifically to the first system of Beyblade X. And we'll get to that in a little bit in what I mean by that. But yeah, so I thought it would be perfect to make this kind of video since I haven't really seen anything on YouTube about this, not even really from Takra Tomi. There are videos like explaining things and how things work, but nothing as comprehensive as this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It took a lot of time to write out. So I also wanted to give a little disclaimer before we start this. A lot of the information I wrote here was from a few months ago, but I've been updating it over time. And what I'm going to be doing instead of just completely removing any old information, I'm still going to keep that old information, but at the same time, give a very specific clear note as to something that now is the most recent information in regards to that such as, for example, Takratomi and Hasbro's relationship. So the reason why I decided to leave the old information in along with the new information is because I basically wanted the beginners and the newcomers and people who are interested in Beyblade X to kind of experience what it's been like for us who have been following Beyblade X from the beginning. So the information, the news, the, the way that the series is going, how we have been told and seeing the direction it's going, I wanted you, the newcomers, to experience the same thing. However, again, this is most updated as of November 25th of 2023. So I will be including the new information when there is new information that has taken over specific old information. So I hope that that was clear. I'm sorry for this long intro, but this is a very long video. And one last disclaimer, again, this is a beginner's guide. So it's going to be very in-depth, but we're not going to go into strategies. We're not going to go into launch techniques. We're not going to go into best combinations or parts. We're not going in-depth into like a competitive or an intermediate level or anything like that. This is just a beginner's guide so that you guys can understand how Beyblade X works um, and all the different terminologies and the different parts and all of that. So with all that said, let's just get into this very in-depth guide for beginners. So welcome to Beyblade X. Here we go. So Beyblade X is the newest generation, the newest series, the newest system, the newest season, and the newest gimmick for Beyblade. Beyblade is a series that has been going on for over 20 years now. So with any series that's been going on for so long, there's going to be a lot of confusion in trying to understand how this is different from everything else. So this is a guide for those that are new to Beyblade, specifically to Beyblade X. So let's just quickly go over these terms that I just mentioned. So first, what is a generation? This is what determines the era of Beyblade we are talking about, and we'll get to that later on. Newer generations are usually released a few years apart from the last. However, this generation, Beyblade X, released only a few months after the burst generation ended. The following terms that I'm going to be saying are basically all sub-definitions within a single generation. So the second terminology we're going with is series. This is another word for generation, basically, but it can also be used to call the new season of the anime. The next term we're going with is system. Basically, each generation has many systems. A system is usually changed once per year and adds more gimmicks, playstyles, and parts. So for example, let's take a look at Burst. The first system in that generation was the single layer system, and then the dual layer system, which made the layers more complex with two layers making the contacts rather than just one. And then there was the god layer system, which added gimmicks, and it goes on. A system can also be used to define an overall gimmick, such as all burst base are part of the burst system, since they all burst. 
and a system can also be used to reference a generation, such as the burst system referencing the burst generation. Another example is the pre-hybrid wheel system is referencing the start of the metal saga where there was no plastic on the fusion wheel. The next term we're going with is season. This can be related to the new anime season or it can be another word for a system. The next term is a gimmick. Usually it's a part that allows the bay to do something it normally wouldn't such as putting rubber on a wheel so it can absorb the opposite spinning opponent's bays or even spinning in a different direction can be seen as a gimmick. However, gimmicks can also relate to the system as a whole as some systems are built around a universal central gimmick such as the Beyblade Burst Dynamite Bays with all of them having two modes of being low attacking and high attacking. Now the next term we gotta go over is stock and combo. Stock basically just means the combination that the Beyblade comes built right out of the box and combo just means combination which is basically the mixing and changing of the parts to make your own unique combination for your own Beyblade. The next term we can talk about is a type. A type basically means the kind of Beyblade that you have based on its parts and combinations. The types are the following. Attack, Defense, Stamina, and Balance types. And we will get to this a little bit later on, but I just wanted to quickly mention it here. The next term is Beyblade, which is our favorite and popular customizable high-performance tops. It's a term to represent the series as a whole, from the tops to the hobbies to the shows, manga, video games, and movies. And on a little note, the abbreviation for Beyblade is Bay. So when you are talking about a specific Beyblade, you can say this bay, or you can also say blade, but that was basically outdone after the first generation. When the second generation started, the abbreviation has basically been switched over to bay. Now, the last term we want to go over is blader. This is a term that is used to identify someone that Beyblades. Now, with all of those terms out of the way, Let's just do a quick overview of all of the previous generations. The generations are the following. The first one is the Bakuten Shoot Beyblade generation. This is the original one and it's mostly plastic. And this generation is fan named and is also most commonly referred to as the plastic generation. The second generation is the Metal Fight Beyblade generation, which has thicker metal wheels, lots of recoils, and it's also fan named and most commonly referred to as the Metal Saga or the Metal Gen. The third generation, which is the one we just came out of, is the Burst Gen. It's mostly plastic and it introduced the Burst gimmick. And then welcome to the fourth generation, the newest one, the one that this guy is built for specifically, the X generation. This started a few months ago over the summer of 2023. And it's basically a mixture of all of the previous generations together, plus a new gimmick is included in it, which is the Axe Dash, which we will get to later on. So basically, think of each generation as a reboot. They're not compatible with each other in terms of parts and really shouldn't be battled against one another. But people do so anyway. So also starting with the Burst generation, we started getting remakes of older generations in the Burst format. And that's really the only way you can use older Beyblades with current generation. X seems to be doing the same thing by remaking some older generations in the X system. We already have one remake which launched with the main first Beyblade, which was a Dronzo remake. With the generations out of the way, if you are familiar with other generations, then the Beyblade anatomy should be similar, but here's an in-depth breakdown of the x base anatomy and this is very important especially for those newcomers the first part we are looking into when it comes to beyblade x base is the gear chip this is basically the new bit beast faceball avatar motif in the center of the beyblade it's what represents the spirit or avatar of the bay basically it's the character or motif surrounding the name of the beyblade and this particular part spins around, but the spinning has an important purpose. The bit latches onto the gear chip and spins due to how the bit works so that the bit can be free to ride around the rails of the stadium. And at the same time, the bit also does attach to the ratchet, which does hold everything together. These are two other parts we'll be getting to pretty soon. The gear chip can't be changed or removed without doing some modification, but these are usually illegal modifications, so I don't recommend that. Also, the gear chip is just 
free spinning so it's pretty fun as well so as a little important note this is not really a separate part it's part of the blade but given it has a official name that is why i'm placing it as another part in this anatomy the second part we are looking in is the blade. As for the breakdown of Beyblade X bays, these bays wheels are metal like the Metal Saga, and these wheels are called the blades. The blades, like the Metal Saga, have a lot of recoil, and honestly, I think there might be a little bit more recoil, as these bays are like weapons. They hit strongly and violently out of nowhere sometimes. There is also a colored translucent plastic part under the metal part, and it gives the bay its color and it's similar to the A energy rings from the Metal Saga, but this part can't be changed, at least not in this first system. This part also takes a lot of inspiration from the way that the Shogun Steel or Zero G base from the Metal Saga looked. Now, a important note, the color translucent part is not being able to be removed in this first system for Beyblade X, like I mentioned earlier. And since it has no separate name, unlike the gear chip, that is why I'm not giving this particular colored part its own section in this breakdown. So understand that for now, this is just the plastic colored part of the blade. The third part we have to look over is the ratchet. The ratchet is the middle part of the bay which connects the blade and the tip. It's called the ratchet, as I said, which is similar to the spin track from the Metal Saga. And these parts are basically plastic and they have different heights and stubs that stick out a little. The more amount of stubs means the easier it is to burst the bay, and their shape is also similar to the blade base from the plastic gen, especially when you add the bit to it. Also, all ratchets will end up being usable with left spinning Beyblades as well whenever those release, as basically there is a lock on each ratchet that indicates the spin direction that the blade has. So all you need to do is just switch this lock for it to be the spin direction that your blade spins at. Now, let's move on to the last part, which is the bit. And the last part that is included in this first system for Beyblade X is the bit. The tips are called the bits in this generation, and it is the equivalent of the performance tip in the Metal Saga. The bit and ratchet together will be the equivalent of the driver and performance tip of the burst base, and they also resemble the blade base from the plastic gen. Bits are what moves the bay around the stadium, and they have different heights in some cases, but usually they are about the same height. They are also a part of the bursting gimmick as they work with the ratchet. Basically, some bits are thicker near the top of the grooves than other bits, and this thickness makes it so that the lock inside of the ratchet holds on tighter to the bit. So the thicker this top part of the bit is, the more burst resistance it has. And even if the ratchet might have multiple stubs on it, the burst resistance will still be a little bit better due to the thickness of the bit. And then the last thing we got to talk about in terms of the bit is the grooves on the bit. The grooves are at the bottom of the bit. And these grooves are basically what allows the Beyblade to go on the X line to do an axe dash, which is what we'll get to in a moment because that is actually the next thing we got to talk about, which is the gimmick. So at the moment, there are two gimmicks for Beyblade X, at least in this first system. The first one is the bursting gimmick. This is a returning gimmick that was introduced in the burst generation, and it basically makes it so that the Beyblades explode. Though as mentioned earlier, bursting this time is not done through teeth or slopes like the burst base, instead they are done through the ratchet and the bit working together. Now, the second and newest gimmick that is introduced in Beyblade X is the axe dash. So basically on the stadium there's this rail and the rail has grooves on it. This is called the X line. When a Beyblade hits its bit on the X line, the grooves on the bit can lock with those on the X line and make the bay go very fast riding it around the stadium and then making it so the Beyblade may hit the opponent at an extreme speed and force. Hence this generation being called the X generation for extreme. And since this is a brand new gimmick being introduced into Beyblade, it also brings along some new metagame and rules that we need to look into. Now, before we get into what has changed, let's take a look at what stayed the same. So this generation, like I mentioned earlier, has the basic four types of Beyblades that a person can have. One is attack, which moves around the stadium aggressively and it loses stamina pretty quickly as it tries to win the battle as fast as possible. 
The other type, the fence type, it basically moves around the stadium a little bit more gently or it can stay in the center and is able to deflect attacks from many Beyblades, basically wearing them down until the defense type is the last one standing. The third type is the stamina type, which like the defense type can move around the stadium softly or it can stay in the center. And stamina types are usually the ones to outspend any other Beyblades as they're designed to be lighter and spend longer. And again, the last type is the balance type, and these types are a mix of all of the other three types in various ways, either by mixing in attributes from just two of them or all three. The type matchup is also the same as before, where attack is good against stamina, stamina is good against defense, and defense is good against attack, while balance is good and weak against each of the other three. And it's important to keep in mind that each Beyblade part itself is unique, as each has their own attributes more in line with a specific type overall. This is important when making your own combinations so that you can build the best bay for you. This is why it's also very important to analyze each part specifically and how they behave in battle, as the battle will show how well each part is and how each part could be specialized in. There are other ways of finding out how good a specific part is for a specific attribute, but that's more complex stuff which we don't really need to get into at the moment, but it usually comes down to things such as how heavy it is, its center of mass, the shape of the blade itself, and so on. But again, that's more advanced stuff. It's also very important to know that this generation keeps the same rules in starting a battle. Bladers keep the bays ready across from each other and count down from 3 to 1 and say let it rip, which is the international launch call, or go shoot, which is the Japanese launch call. And once they finish saying their launch call, they release their bays. Now, this generation also keeps the three winning conditions from the past generations, but with a new point ranking system, and it also introduces a new fourth way to get a point. The goal of each match is to win 4 points, and given some of these changes and the new gimmick, this generation does need you to have the most generation specific stadium in order to fully utilize this new point system and gimmick. But you can still use the bays themselves in older generation stadiums with the understanding that the game will be played more as it has been for the past like 24-25 years. And also keep in mind you can technically use older generation bays in the new stadium but they will not be able to utilize the X-Line and X-Dash gimmicks and honestly the X-Line might become a hazard or an interference for previous generation bays. Now the new point system and the winning conditions are the following. The first point system is a spin finish. This is when one bay outspins the other. The bay that is still spinning is given one point. The second way to win is a overfinish. This is when one bay gets stuck in one of the pockets. The bay that is still spinning is given two points. Keep in mind, overfinishes is a little bit tricky because a Beyblade could go into a pocket but then come out and still be spinning. If the Beyblade stays stuck in the pocket and stops spinning, that's when you lose. The next point is a burst finish. This is when one Beyblade bursts the other. The bay that is not bursted or that is still spinning is given two points. And now the newest method of winning a point is when a Beyblade is knocked out of the stadium through the extreme pocket. This is a extreme finish. This extreme pocket is a new pocket that sends the Beyblade out of the stadium and this can be done by using the X dash to send the Beyblade flying through the extreme pocket or even if a Beyblade self KOs using the extreme dash and sending themselves out through the extreme pocket. The one that is still within the stadium is given 3 points. Now the next thing we gotta go over in terms of the new metagame and rules is a type performance change. In the past stamina and defense types behaved a very specific way, but now stamina types and defense types have switched how they perform. Now stamina types are moving around the stadium and defense types stand usually still. So stamina types come with wide and ball bits while defense types now come with a sharp and thin bits. This is due to balancing for the X dash which helps attack types from just endlessly spinning around in a circle and losing stamina fast which also makes the battles more exciting since that happens less now. Now that is basically it for the changes in the metagame uh, and the basic overview. Again, this isn't for intermediate or advanced. This is really just for beginners. So again, we're not going over different launch techniques and how those have changed because those also has. So 
for right now, just for basic understanding, this section is done. So let's go into the next. So let's take a look at the current gear for this generation. The Ripcord launcher and the Ripcord itself. This is a classic launcher that is in every single generation and it comes in two parts that are separate. The launcher is what holds the bay and the ripcord. The ripcord is the piece that you put inside of the launcher and then pull out to launch the bay. This particular gear has some changes, honestly a lot of changes. First, the prongs that hold the bay blades are now moved to the other side of the launcher, so where the ripcord sticks out of instead of where you put the ripcord in. It also goes back to the prong shapes that the Metal Saga had, which thankfully I'm grateful for because the burst ones sucked. But the burst ones did resemble the plastic generation prongs as well. The X prongs though add an extra prong, so there's now three instead of two. And an even bigger change is that all of the launchers come without their launcher stoppers. This is to basically make it so that the launches spin faster, smoother, and more consistent while not stopping at the end of every launch like previous Ripcord launchers used to do. So this also helps give the bay more momentum and speed, which helps it survive a little bit longer and hit a little bit harder. The next gear we have to go over is the string launcher. It's another kind of launcher that comes with basically three parts, but these are not three parts that are separate. They're all three parts that are stuck together to basically make one launcher. So those parts are the launcher, the handle, and the string. Now this launcher basically makes it easier to launch bays, unlike the ripcord launcher. As this one, you don't need to put the ripcord back in as the string auto recoils after you let it go, which saves some time. The string is also pretty decently long and can help making the bay spin faster and stronger since it has more length than the ripcord, which makes more revolutions on the launcher itself so that the bay blade can spin faster and longer. The prongs here are also three prongs to hold the bays. String launchers are also usually better, more powerful than ripcord ones, but I've heard a lot of people say that the ripcord ones for the X generation is better than the string launcher, and I've also heard some say that they're equal. I personally don't see too much of a difference just yet, uh, but that is important to know that in the past, usually string launchers was always stronger. The next gear is the launcher grip, and it's a grip that basically makes it more comfortable for launching. It also gives you more room to hold your launcher. You can attach your launcher to it and eventually accessories that will help your gear and launches and comfort. There's also a piece that does come off of it, which you can put on the top or on the bottom of the grip, and this gives you a different kind of comfort level. I prefer it on the top. The next gear we have is the Bay Battle Pass, which is a device that looks very similar to the Bay Logger from the Burst Gen, and kind of has similar functions to the Bay Pointer and the Bay Logger, the Bay Pointer being from the Metal Saga. Um, but there's also some extra features as well that those two point systems didn't have. Uh, this connects to the Beyblade X app and it allows you to see how fast your launch was and the RPM that the bay is expected to be at given that particular launch speed. It also tracks points if you win or lose and so on. The next year is the Beyblade X app. This app connects to the Bay Battle Pass. It also scans QR codes on the box that the Beyblades come in, so you can have a digital Bay Locker with you showing your full collection. And you can also do ghost battles and online battles based on the data collected from the Bay Battle Pass between you and other people all around the world. You can also win actual special and exclusive Beyblades with enough points, such as the Kobo Drake Bay. But if you're using the Japanese version of the app, you will need a proxy to ship it if you're not in Japan. Now, the sad part about the app is that currently, at least as of September, it's only in Japan. And from what I'm seeing, there doesn't really seem to be an option to switch the language on it. It also seems like at the moment, if you have bays from Takaratomi, but that were released outside of Japan, uh, the codes will not be scannable with the Japanese version of the app. You would need to wait for the app version released for that region. You, so in other words, if you have a Takaratomi, Beyblade Axe app, and it has this particular sticker on it, that means that this Beyblade, even though it's from Takratomi, was not released specifically in Japan, but was in other Asian markets. That means that the codes in these bays do not work with the Japanese version of the app, so you would need to wait until the app is fully released in the other markets. And if you are planning to wait for a US market, 
release or international market release. We will get to that in a little bit because it's a little bit tricky. But with that said, let's go into the next gear, which is the deck case. And this is basically a box that allows you to hold three Beyblades in. And this is used for taking your Beyblades to a tournament. And the most recent gear that has been announced that is set to release in December of 2023 is a soft storage case, which you can also use to take to tournaments. And this is a little bit more convenient as you can put a lot of things in it. You can carry up to eight Beyblades, a couple of different bits, a string launcher, your Bay Battle Pass, and a grip along with some other accessories. And of course, the last gear we can talk about, which we have talked a little bit about before, is the stadium. The stadium is essential so that you can, as I said earlier, use the new generation to its fullest with the X-Line and X-Dash gimmicks. And the stadium is where you would be launching your Beyblades and having your battles to begin with as well. Now, with all of this said, that's the basic general idea and guide to Beyblade X. However, there's still a lot of extra and very important information that is important to know. This does not relate to the parts themselves, but it does relate to information that is essential, as I mentioned earlier. So first, let's get into the extra information, starting with the app, since we were just recently talking about that. Even though the app is Japanese only, you can still download it on international phones. But it's a messy and complicated process to do so and needs you to make a Japanese account with your phone on the app store. So honestly, it might be better to wait and see if they actually do release an international app. And if they actually do release an international Beyblade X app, in my opinion, they should have released that at the same time as the Japanese app. And the reason for that is the next point, which we'll get to in a minute. And again, as I mentioned earlier, please understand that if you have a Japanese app and a Asian market code, the two are not going to be compatible. You will need to use the Asian market code to scan the Asian market codes. Same thing with the Japanese ones. The Japanese codes will only work on the Japanese app. It will not work on the Asian market apps. Please keep that in mind. That is important to know, especially when it releases internationally to like the US, Canada, you know, other parts of the world, because that principle will most likely still be applicable to those other regions. Now, the reason why I'm saying that, in my opinion, the international app should have been released at the same time as the Japan app is for the next point. The international market and Hasbro. So first, Takara Tomi is the makers of Beyblade, and they release it in its home country, Japan. And in the past, Hasbro released Beyblade for the international market. Hasbro Bays were usually compatible with Takara Tomi Bays up until the burst generation, where Hasbro changed a lot, making the two incompatible with their parts, other than the disc. For Beyblade X, Takara Tomi is intending to make Beyblade an international brand and honestly Beyblade has always been one and it still is but what they mean by that is that they do not want to depend on the Hasbro to release it internationally anymore they want to do it themselves and have announced that they will this basically means that the quality of the Beyblade should be the same as the Japanese version and not butchered like Hasbro butchered the Beyblade burst generation side note in my opinion I think that Takara Tomi noticed that Hasbro did a horrible job with how they handled Beyblade burst in terms of the quality and everything. And they probably also noticed that a lot of people do import Takratomi Beyblades from Japan so that they could just be making more money that way instead of paying Hasbro a portion and losing out on the imports. That's my opinion. So that's just a side note. But going back to the actual script. So we're still not too sure though what the plans for this will be or if Hasbro or any other company will be involved at all and in any way with the international release. Side note, there's an update to this. We'll get that. We'll get to that towards the end of this section. Back to the script. Also, given that they do plan to bring it internationally themselves, they should have already released the app with different language options, but they haven't done so. So as I mentioned earlier, my advice with the app is what I said about the app portion. Also keep in mind that the codes are a one-time scan. So if you show your code to someone, they scan it. Unfortunately, you cannot claim that code. 
Now, I also do hope that no matter what the case is with the apps, I do hope that there will be some kind of account merger so you can keep your base if you use the Japan or Asian market app and are in a different international market. Hopefully you can merge it. I don't think that they are going to do that, honestly, but I do hope it is an option that they will do since, again, they are aware that people do import these bays. Now, since we're at the end of this particular section, there is some very big news that I do need to address. And after writing all of this, there was a recent press release just a few weeks ago that did confirm Hasbro will still be distributing Beyblade Axe internationally. This press release also stated that the products will be one-to-one -one with the Takra Tommy versions, meaning that the quality should be the same as well as all the gimmicks and parts. It seems like maybe this new partnership between the two um, had some new guidelines that Takratomi wanted Hasbro to follow. So it could be that Takratomi is definitely still more involved. And like I said, probably set up new policies for Hasbro in how they can handle Beyblade Rex. And honestly, this is a good thing because this is similar to how it kind of was with the Metal Saga and the Plastic Gen. So I can't complain too much about that. My biggest concern now is in regards to how the app functionality will be functioning. Again, I'm still really hoping that they're going to do a function that allows you to merge your Beyblade X app account. If you have a Japan account or an Asian market account and are based in an international market, again, I'm really hoping they will allow you to do a merger if they even do release the app internationally. Because, for example, Beyblade Burst had a similar app, however... It was not released in the U.S. Hasbro did not translate it. You basically had to do the same process as what I mentioned earlier for the Beyblade X app. So keep in mind, we might not be getting this app internationally. However, if we do, that would be amazing. Also, it is very important to note that during this press release, even though it was confirmed that Hasbro will be releasing Beyblade X internationally, it will not happen until about the fall of 2024 for some reason. So that is exactly a year from now. I don't understand why they're releasing it so far ahead. Usually Hasbro does start their releases about a year or so after Japan starts it, but this seems a little bit farther ahead for some reason. So basically at this point, other than the app issues, if you're international, there's really not really a reason to wait on getting Beyblade X base from Takratomi, either from the Japan or Asian markets. So my advice for that is just go with the Takratomi options because you're going to be one year ahead of everyone else. And honestly, we can't really say how much of a price difference it's going to be. One of the biggest issues that Hasbro did under the burst releases is that the quality went down so much and they also increased the prices. So in some cases, in, in some countries, it was cheaper or the same price getting Takra Tommy Beyblades. So take a look into that. But keep in mind at the moment, we really have no idea how much these Hasbro versions of the base will cost. So that is why I suggest just go with the Takra Tommy versions. Now, since we just finished talking about Hasbro and Takara Tomy, uh, the next thing we got to talk about is some other official companies. So as mentioned, Takara Tomy and Hasbro are the two companies that make official Beyblades, Takara Tomy in Japan and in a few other Asian markets, while Hasbro in the international market. However, there are a few other companies that Takara Tomy partners with for a few other markets that Hasbro does not sell in, such as in South Korea. These other companies are such as Son Kong or Young Toys, and there are a few others. These ones are safe, they are real, and they can even be a little bit cheaper when buying online in some cases. However, keep in mind that most of the time you will be seeing mostly Takratomi and Hasbro Beyblades online, and it's easier to just focus on these two companies. But it's also important to know that again, there are other official companies that Takra Tommy does partner with, and there is a list of those on the Beyblade Wiki. But again, just to be easier, focus on just Takra Tommy Beyblades or even Hasbro Beyblades as well. And the reason why I say all of this is because that leads into our next topic, which is the fakes and scams. 
So as mentioned, Takra Tomi and Hasbro are the two main companies that make official real Beyblades. It is important to always make sure that when buying new Beyblades with their boxes, that their box does have the logo for either one of these companies or any of the other official companies Takra Tomi partners with. And if you are buying Beyblades that are without the box, loose or in a lot, just be careful with these until you are more experienced in seeing how real Beyblades are and look like. And if you ever have any doubts or anything, just message the person selling them and ask questions about what company the Beyblades are from. And remember as well that if the price is way too low, it might be a fake or a scam. Uh, especially if you're going to be collecting past gen Beyblades or even rare Beyblades. So always be careful when buying from sites that sell other things, not just Beyblades, as these are easy to find fakes in, along with some real ones too. But still, be even more careful with scams, as there are a lot of people scamming others with Beyblades, and basically they just end up taking the person's money and never sending the product, or they end up sending a fake. If the seller is messaging in a strange way, such as they don't know the answers to all of your questions fully, or brushes things aside and does not want to show more pictures when asked, and so on, then I would recommend not going with that sale. Buying fake Beyblades basically means that the quality is worse, meaning that they can break easier and they're also not allowed in tournaments. And they can also be harmful as some even have lead and other toxic materials. Real ones do not. So if you have any concern, just do more research on the seller, the website, and compare the Beyblade that you are seeing there with official ones or just ask people online who are more knowledgeable in Beyblades. Now, the next important information we got to talk about is naming the combos for the first season or the first system of Beyblade X. Basically, the way that the bays are named is thankfully very simple compared to how messy Burst got with their naming over time. It also seems to follow the Metal Saga naming format, which was honestly perfect. So let's go over this naming system for combos. Also keep in mind, again, this might change in time like Burst did, but hopefully it doesn't really change too much as the Metal Saga was basically able to keep the same naming conventions for the most part. So the Blade and Gear Chip. This is the main name of the Beyblade. It's what comes first. So let's use Drawn Sword as an example. If you want, you can even kind of say that the first part of the name, which is Drawn, can be attributed to the Gear Chip and the second part to the blade name. So drawn is the dragon, which is the avatar or the spirit of the Beyblade and sword is the blade. Now, side note, this is not officially stated. I'm just noticing this as we have Knight Shield and Knight Lance and both of their gear chips are a knight while the blade is different. So that is why I'm saying you could see it like that, but we do need more releases. And to further add to this theory, after writing this particular section, the trailer for the anime released and we do see that Bird's first Beyblade in the manga, Strike Hawk, is not his first Beyblade in the anime. Instead, he has a Wizard Arrow Blade that is a recolor with a hawk motif in the gear chip. Now, if by going through this theory, we can basically say that his first Beyblade in the anime is called Hawk Arrow, but we don't know. But it would just be really cool if that is the case as it would also confirm this naming theory. Now, a new update, <laughs> so a note to this particular note, is that after writing this note, uh, they actually started the anime. And in the anime, we actually do not hear Bird's initial Beyblade name. So that doesn't confirm it. However, they did announce the evolution for Hell's Scythe and the Drawn Sword. And this particular evolution is more like a side grade in an evolution but still it does seem to confirm this particular theory as the avatar name is the same for the gear chip motif and the second part being the blade is the second part of the name so basically the reason why i'm saying that is the evolution for these two bays is called hell's chain and drawn dagger and basically the gear chip has the same avatar or spirit of the beyblade in it and just in a different position so this does definitely seem to imply and confirm that the gear chip is the first name of the particular beyblade while the blade is the second part of the name the next part that comes in naming your combo is the ratchet 
It basically is a number followed by a dash and another number. The first number in the naming for the ratchet is how many stubs the ratchet has. The second number is the height of the ratchet. So let's go with an example of a 3-60. This basically means that the ratchet has three stubs and is a 60 height. Now, as for the height, I don't really know the height measurements. I couldn't really find um, calculations for that. I think it's in centimeters or millimeters. Um, I'm not too sure, but it's using a measuring system. So again, the first part of the numbers, the three is the number of stubs in the ratchet. And the second part is the height of the ratchet. And the last part that comes into the actual naming system is the bit. And what we take from the bit is usually just the first letter of the full name for the bit. So let's go with an example of F, which stands for flat. Some bits have two letters, such as capital H, capital N. Now, there's already a bit called N, which stands for needle. However, HN is a taller version of it and is called high needle. So these two letters is basically the abbreviation. So keep in mind when you see multiple letters for a bit, it basically means at the current moment that there is something extra for it. So the abbreviated name for the stock drawn sword is Drawn Sword 360F, while the full name is Drawn Sword 360 Flat. Now let's move on to the next important information, the stickers. The bays in this generation do not really seem to have stickers, and this could change later on with the next system for Beyblade X, but for the current system, there is no sticker other than the exception, the first Beyblade X remake of a plastic generation, which is the Dronzer Bay. The X version of Dronzer does come with stickers and you do need to put them on. So maybe remakes will have stickers, but main X bays won't, or at least not for now. I also want to quickly go over the next point, which is painted blades. Some bays such as Cobo Drake or the upcoming Phoenix Wing Bay come with a painted blade. These will chip off in time so as you use them. So keep in mind, if you want them to look as they are, don't use them. Either get a duplicate or wait for a random booster version of it. That's just going to come with it unpainted in some cases. Now, the next point that we should go over is the box stats. So we won't be going over the stats for each Beyblade or each of the stats that comes with Beyblades that's listed on their box. Again, that's more complex stuff and not needed for simple overview of introducing Beyblade X. But these stats do show the stats for each part that comes with the Beyblade and it's usually on the back of the Beyblade box. This basically includes the parts attack power, burst, resistance, stamina, defense, and so on. And while it might be a good source to see how good the part is, and see what you can use it for. In the past, for the previous generations, these stats kind of have usually been pretty off for the most part. So more testing and releases do need to be released to really say for sure how good these stats are in representing the bays and their parts. But just because of how it's been with previous generation, don't pay too much attention to these stats. Do the testing on your own. Now, the next important topic that we got to talk about is again, this is the first X system. That's what this guide is based on. So since Beyblade X just released over the summer, we only have the first system, the first season and series and gimmick for this new generation. Keep in mind in a few months or a year from now, a lot of this stuff could be changed, outdated, or everything else could still be applicable, but adding in more information on it because of new parts and gimmicks. Now let's go over the next point that is very important for newcomers to understand, especially when they are going to be buying Takratomi Beyblades as opposed to Hasbro Beyblades. And this next point is the product type. The product types that Takratomi sells Beyblade X and Beyblade in general as is the first one being starters. These are Beyblades that come with a launcher, either a ripcord or a string launcher. The next one is a booster. These are Beyblades that do not come with any launchers. The next product type that they have is a random booster set. These are basically boosters that are random. You don't know what you're going to get. But each random booster volume basically shows all of the Beyblades that is possible to get in that particular set. There's usually one prize Beyblade in a random booster set or volume. 
and that is the new Beyblade, the one that you are aiming to get. The rest are usually reprints with new customizations in different colors. It's also important to know that even though there is a prize bay that you're aiming to get with random boosters, you could actually have that particular blade, but in a different color in the same random booster set that that prize bay is in. But again, in a different color with different parts. So it's not the prize bay, but it's still nice to have that particular blade in a more cheaper way. Let's go with an example for Shark Edge in Beyblade X. It is the prize bay for the first random booster volume of Beyblade X. It is purple and has a specific combination. However, in that same volume, you can get a yellow Shark Edge, but with different parts. Obviously, it's still a Shark Edge, but the rest of the parts in the color scheme is not the Shark Edge. So it's not technically the prize bay. Also, the prize bay is always a new blade. However, the other parts that makes up the bay could be a combination of totally new parts that are appearing for the first time with that bay or old parts or a mixture of the two. Now, the next product type that we have is sets. These are basically Beyblades that come with other bays in a set or other things such as a stadium or an accessory or something like that. So in other words, a set is just basically a Beyblade that comes with extra stuff. That's not just a launcher. Now, the next topic we quickly got to go over is the anime and the manga. There is a manga that releases monthly. And so far, there's been about six chapters that's been released. And then there's also a chapter zero. So you can kind of say that there's been about seven chapters, including chapter zero, that is. And the sixth chapter just released this month in November. And keep in mind that so far it is fan translated and it's pretty good um, in terms of story overall. I'm really enjoying it. Also keep in mind that the bays in the manga are what we have so far. And the anime is still set to release. Honestly, side note, we'll get to that in a little bit. The anime has already released. We'll talk about that soon. But going back to the script... Usually, in the past, when Beyblade anime start, the bays are not the first system of the generation. For example, in the Metal Saga, the first system in the manga was the Metal System, as most fans call it, as the pre-hybrid real system. And this was how it was in the manga. However, when the anime start, however, when the Metal Saga anime started, it didn't start with the Metal System. It started with the hybrid wheel system, which was the second system in the model generation. The same is true for Burst, and I think the Plastic Gen 2, but I could be wrong on the Plastic Gen because I never really read the manga for that. However, in some cases, the first system does appear as cameos in the shows, but usually they're just kind of like for there for fans to follow from the beginning to see kind of like in the background. So before the Beyblade X anime release, we weren't really sure if it would start with a second system or the first one. But given that we did get some promo arts from the anime, it did seem like they were starting with the first one. But again, we got a trailer and then we also got the actual anime. However, like I said, Bird in the anime does not have the same blade that he does in the manga. But it seems that the gear chip is the same one. And as of November 25th, 2023, we currently have eight episodes of the Beyblade X anime. And honestly, I'm loving it. The characters are amazing. They're fun. They're really cool. And the animation is great. I like the futuristic aesthetic of all of it. Intro song, ending song are so fun and really, really cool. And there's just like this huge neon futuristic vibe to everything. And I love that. And it, it's literally how just even the, the series as a whole for Beyblade X seems to be going in. It seems very futuristic in a way. And seeing that being reflected in the anime after a few months of just the products, it's really, really cool. And the soundtrack is amazing. Like the, the OST for this anime is so good. I love it. Um, but yeah, so we got eight episodes in so far. This next topic we got to talk about is some resources and community related things to Beyblade. So some of the best things about the hobby is the way that the fandom is so dedicated to it. We have many sources that can help you find out anything that you need to about the series, the hobby, or even the products. And the best place to go and look into this is the WBO, which is the World Beyblade Organization. It is a fan run organization that's been around since I believe the plastic gen and has always been updated with everything related to Beyblade with the most current and recent information. 
We also host tournaments there as well, and we also just post things and talk in forums about anything related to Beyblade. There is also an official WBO Discord server where you can basically talk with bladers at any time. And then there's also the Beyblade Wiki, which has detailed information on the parts, the characters, the shows, and so on. And you can even go to the main Beyblade subreddit as well. And of course, one of the best places to look into is the official Beyblade Japanese YouTube channel and the official Beyblade websites as well. And I say it like that because, you know, there are the US YouTube channels and there are the Japanese ones. The Japanese ones is always showing the newest products, the newest releases. They go into detail about the parts and all that stuff. If you don't understand Japanese, might not be the most helpful thing, but at least you'll be caught up in what's more recent as well. So again, it's just really important that you stick with these communities and these resources because it will help you get the right information, see the most recent releases, and also just communicate with other bladers. And just to make it easier for you guys, I'm putting all of the links to these resources and these communities that I just talked about in the description below. So definitely check them out. I'll also be posting my direct Twitter account. So if you guys want to message me there and ask for help with anything, you're free to do so. Uh, but again, at the same time, you guys can always put your questions in the comments section of this video and I and other people can always answer them as well. So now let's go on to the last point that we got to talk about, and that is the extreme gear sports. Beyblade X is mostly aimed at an older market, people in their 20s onwards, and it's also taking a more competitive sports angle instead of the hobby sports angle that past generations took. The entire marketing for Beyblade X as of right now is using the term Extreme Gear Sports to show this, which is similar to how Hasbro used Performance Top System during the Metal Saga or High Performance Top System to basically indicate that these are tops that can perform unlike others. However, we're not too sure yet if the Extreme Gear Sports is just to show that they're going more towards a heavy sports view with this generation, or if it's actually the name of the first system for Beyblade X, rather than it being called the X system or the Extreme system. Honestly, it could be both. But anyway, I'm just going to keep playing this trailer that Takratomi used to show how they're marketing at an older group and an international one as well. So in conclusions, with all of that said, I really hope that this helps explain the new system and the new generation in detail as it can be confusing for new people or people just coming back to Beyblade. But right now it is literally the perfect time to get into the hobby. There's a lot of great things here and it definitely feels more mature like the Metal Saga did, which is my favorite generation. But while adding the charm of the plastic gen and the innovation of the burst gen as well, while being more accessible than the past and doing something different and new. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Feel free to message me. I will try to answer anything as best as I can. If I left anything out, please let me know. Um, oh, and there is actually one thing I forgot. Usually, Takratomi releases products once a month. And their products are usually about one starter or booster. Plus, like, maybe a set and then a random booster. So you're looking at about three products, maybe four if they're including some gears as well, um, a month. So you, you can really pick and choose what you want. Keep that in mind. Uh, but always once a month, there is a new product that is released and it's always at least one new Beyblade. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. So yes, if you guys have any questions... If you need guys on where to buy them safely, there's, you know, feel free to message below. A couple of quick examples is Blade Bear Premier, uh, Mall of Toys. Those are some big ones. You can also get them on eBay, but make sure it says Takratomi on the boxes. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, I hope that this guide helped and answer any questions or any confusion that you guys had. Let me know if you have any others. Rate, come subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.